Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today, for the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we are going to be taking a look at the terrifying world of hormones as we examine the Horu Horu no Mi. The Horu Horu no Mi is a paramecia type fruit that allows its user to craft unique hormones that can affect any body they strike, including the user themselves. And this, of course, can produce a variety of interesting effects, to say the least. The fruit was consumed in the series by the glorious Emporio Ivankov and made its first appearance during the Impel Down arc. Easy, easy etymology this time, as the Horu Horu no Mi takes its name directly from the English word hormone, which would be pronounced as Horumon in Japanese. Although to be fair, English is a very sneaky language and stole most of its words from other languages, in this case being ancient Greek. Whatever the case, once this word made its way back into the English vernacular, Viz and Funimation both decided to translate it as the Horm Horm Fruit, effectively shortening the word exactly as it was done in Japanese, but with a less satisfactory sound. All right, so anybody who has gone through puberty knows that regular hormones are pretty insanely powerful. However, this devil fruit takes things to a whole new level, granting the user the ability to influence factors such as emotional states, thermoregulation, growth, and even the manipulation of a being's entire gender. But before we get into those, it's very important to note the delivery mechanism of said hormones, which are administered through a series of fingers that morph into syringes. Now, if you're influencing yourself or another willing party, that's fine. However, if the user were attempting to access their powers through combat or another more hostile situation, then this is a pretty big drawback because it depends on entirely on their ability to strike their opponent. But should that condition be satisfied, let's take a look at the potential results. First up, in terms of growth, the user is able to gigantify physical features of a particular being, which could be incredibly useful in a wide array of situations. And to use basic combat, for example, the user could inject themselves to give them gear third like super arms, or perhaps even on an opponent to thoroughly confuse and throw them off. It should be said that while no evidence has been shown in the series, in theory, it should also be possible to use hormones to shrink certain bodily aspects, as synthetic hormones have been implemented in the real world for various purposes such as reducing height. And with the amped up craziness of the Horu Horu no Mi, I don't think it would be out of the question for the user to turn either themselves or another target into what would effectively be a chibi version of themselves. Of course, these hormones can also be used for healing purposes as well, as the user of the fruit can generate substances that unleash the full potential of the bodily immune system, which can range from enhanced fighting of a common cold, all the way to allowing the body to overcome an overwhelming deadly dose of poison generated by a certain warden of impel down. However, it must be noted that in these more extreme cases, survival of the target is almost entirely dependent on their own personal will. Should they not wish to fight, then a fully armed immune system is near pointless, as it would be receiving orders to surrender. However, with a voracious general, then quite a battle will ensue. There is, however, one huge detriment to engaging in this particular use of the fruit, which is that the body suffers a certain degree of after effects after being kicked into overdrive. And these are not trivial either. For example, in order to save Luffy's life in the series and give his body the power to fight Magellan's poison, it cost 10 years of his overall lifespan to complete the process. Which I suppose, yes, is better than dying right then and there, but there are perhaps other situations, you know, non-life-threatening ones, in which a user may wish to rethink their use of the fruit. For example, these hormones can also be used to relieve stress, tension, and fatigue, which allows a person to push far beyond their natural physical and mental limits. Although it does come at a cost of heavily increased fatigue hitting the target once the effects of the hormone have worn off, as well as potential long-term lifespan reducing effects, as previously stated. But another pretty insane possibility exists within this fruit, with the ability to completely change the gender of an individual. Now, for the purpose of combat, this is obviously a massive advantage because forcing your opponent into a body that they are unfamiliar with will result in a sharp decline in their natural abilities. Plus, there is also the initial shock factor to consider because of the time it would take them to mentally adjust their new form, a psychological advantage that Emporio Ivankov has applied on multiple occasions throughout the series. But it should also be said that this feature, unlike several other devil fruits which invoke a temporary change is permanent. So in reality, the user of this fruit would come to completely change the world as we know it, should they be inclined. I mean, for example, gender dysphoria may all but cease to be with an easy and reliable source of switching to a physical form that caters to one's preferred identity. The thing about this though, as well as every other effect crafted by the user, I guess, is that they could only be applied on a global scale through a means of mass production, which may not be entirely out of the question because whilst even Kov has only really been shown injecting hormones directly into a target, there is the possibility that they could be extracted from his body and used without his implementation, possibly even studied and replicated as well. In which case, these insane powers would come to potentially reshape the world as we know it. 
So with that in mind, let's take a look at how this fruit is put to use by Emporio Ivankov, who may be best known as a member of the Revolutionary Army to the readers and viewers of One Piece. However, to the denizens of the world, he is also known as a Miracle Man. People from all throughout the world seek him to perform miracles on them, which we can infer would be devil fruit related. Whether it would be helping them to fight a deadly disease, swap their genders, or anything else that this crazy hormone fruit is capable of. As such, Ivankov grew a dedicated following of individuals who wish to live a more fluid lifestyle than the one presented by standard society. And Ivankov will frequently change the genders of both himself and his followers, depending on how they are feeling at any given time. Although one of Ivankov's more devastating uses of the horror horonomy is employing the growth hormone and applying it to his own head. This is very important because Ivankov's primary method of attack in the series are shockwaves created by his winking motion, which means that the bigger the lashes to wink, the more powerful the shockwaves become. But in Ivankov's particular case, making his head gigantic can also serve a purpose of transportation, as allegedly his hair is able to hold a total of 235 people within it whilst the growth hormone is active. Now, as for the good old fashioned world of awakening, it's another non-standard paramecia, so changing your environment probably isn't on the cards. But another natural escalation of the fruit may have to do with the delivery mechanism, which normally is through the syringe-like fingers. So perhaps an awakened user of the horohoronomi could bypass this and just excrete hormones from their body going forth into the world and affecting the environment in whatever way they see fit, kind of like a pheromone effect. And yes, I know that science, by and large, says that humans have little capacity to detect pheromones. However, with the kind of potency demonstrated by other effects of this fruit, I think that that most certainly has the potential to change. And even if they still remain ineffective on humans, they would most certainly work on animals. And if there's one thing that One Piece world has in abundance, it's exceptionally large and absurdly dangerous creatures that an awakened user of this devil fruit may be able to manipulate into being under their control. So sort of like a miniature and more aggressive version of the ancient weapon Poseidon is what I'm thinking. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a hormone controlling human. In addition to everything we've mentioned thus far, hormones also have the ability to enhance memory function, which is why people tend to remember embarrassing or fearful events much more vividly. This is due to a release of adrenaline and cortisol, which results in temporarily enhanced memory. So you know, in theory, if you could control the release of these hormones into your body, then you could program yourself to more effectively remember information or circumstances that you deem more necessary for the future. Also, something to be aware of with this fruit is that it will unleash a never-ending storm of theories and speculation within your life and the world you inhabit, just as it has impacted the One Piece fanbase. The most infamous act of which is the Crocomum theory, which states that Crocodile was once a woman and is in fact the mother of Monkey D. Luffy. So as soon as painfully inquisitive minds become aware of your hormone abilities, I assure you that nothing will ever be the same again. But in the end, what we have here is a pretty nifty devil fruit. Just as Ivankov has become in the series, the Horu Horu no Mi can turn you into a literal miracle worker, capable of everything I've mentioned in this video and probably more, because the world of hormones is incredibly vast and powerful. The main thing to keep in mind is that these abilities do come at a cost, with the immune system boosting hormones being directly linked to the loss of lifespan, but there may also be smaller prices to pay with each use of the fruit, because whatever application is invoked, it does put unnatural stress on the body due to the extremely concentrated nature of the substances being injected. Plus, let's remember that the whole injecting thing is a pretty huge detriment if you'd planned on using the fruit in any form of combat. However, with a competent wielder, this fruit can no doubt accomplish some pretty phenomenal feats, although it's probably not for me personally because I'm not keen on the after effects, but certainly not a fruit to be ignored in the series. And with that, we are going to commit the Horu Horu no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next time on the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we will be moving on from Ivankov to his direct subordinate Inazuma to take a closer look at a very cool, very strange, and very sharp fruit, the Choki Choki no Mi. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line View Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Horu Horu no Mi. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. Do you think we get a new show of Hunter Hunter? And it, when are you macking new about Crollo Lucifer, please?
Sadly, I don't think we'll be getting a new show anytime soon. I mean, despite the fact that the anime finished in 2014, we are nowhere near another installment due to the situation of the manga. In fact, the manga still has yet to complete a single arc from where the anime left off, largely due to the fact that the series is on hiatus much more often than it is in serialization. So for example, we haven't had a single chapter published thus far in 2019, and it's looking like a pretty grim year actually, just like 2015 when nothing was published, or 2013 which had a grand total of two chapters published. So as as much as I'd love another Hunter x Hunter anime, there is almost nothing for it to adapt. We'd probably need to wait for the Succession War arc to be over, and all I can say is that it doesn't seem like we are anywhere near the climax of that yet. Also, I'll be making a video of Crawler fairly soon on my second channel, New World Review. Which kind of haki would you choose? Uso Shoku, Observation, Conqueror. You can choose only one. That's a tough choice, actually. Initially, I'd lean towards observation haki, but at the same time, I can't deny that armament haki would come in very handy in a lot of situations. The one I'm least keen on is conqueror's haki, because unless it has a more advanced application, I don't see a lot of great use for it. I mean, unless you're traveling through a really crowded city and you are just sick of people bumping into you. So, you know, applying it in that situation might be fun. Spell red. No.